Hello people, it's Grumpy Gamer. Welcome back to another Feed the Beast tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make rock wool and how to use it. It's very, very nice. Um, use this for decorating. It's a lot better than using regular wool. It takes a lot less resources and um, you never have to shear another sheep again. But before I do that, let me go ahead and mention that I'm going to be doing a Let's Play series. I already have my first episode up. First episode, I'll just kind of give a tour of what I've built so far. but I'm not going to bother posting that let's play up on uh, subreddits or anything like that or forums because they just get a lot of downvotes. But if you come to this tutorial and you'd like to see me just play the game, check out my let's play. But anyway, let's show this rock wool tutorial. Now, first of all, let me show you a piece of it. It has a few advantages over regular wool. We'll get into that. But there you go. There's light gray rock wool. It looks just like regular wool. And it, you tear it down just like regular wool. Regular wool, it's got the same durability and everything. So, what are the advantages and disadvantages? Well, the only disadvantage is that the stuff will not replace wool recipes. So, if you've got a recipe that calls for wool, you can't use rock wool. So, an example would be uh, just like a picture frame, which, like this right here, if, if you know from vanilla Minecraft, that's just a piece of white wool or surrounded by sticks. Well, with this stuff right here, you, you only use it for decorating, but let me go over the advantages. Now, first of all, let me show you regular wool. If I want to dye it, I just put a piece of, like, if I want to make blue wool, I put a piece of lapis next to it. One piece of lapis will make one piece of blue wool. Well, with rock wool, um, one piece of lapis will make eight pieces. So if I do this right here, as you can see right there, that will give me eight blue rock wool. So you only use one eighth as much dye, so that's really handy. You don't have to turn as many flowers and uh, squid and all that kind of stuff. So, what are some of the other advantages? Well, an another advantage is you don't have to shear sheep. This stuff's all made with machinery, and it's, it can be all automated. Basically, you could completely automate this where you don't have to do anything whatsoever. All you have to do is walk up into a chest and pull out some wool but I'm not quite that automated with my setup because you don't honestly don't need that much of this stuff just so what are the what are the other advantages uh, I forgot oh yes here's another advantage okay let me show you something here let's say I want to make uh, blue wool well black wool will not uh, with a piece of lapis will not make uh, blue wool so if you actually want to make blue wool, you have to use a piece of white wool. White wool you can dye it to whatever color you want. Otherwise, if you have like black wool and you want to make it blue, you have to bleach it with the bone meal first. Well, with this stuff right here, the light gray rock wool, it has no neutral color. So light gray can make yellow wool, but I also have some blue wool here. Blue wool here, let me show you this. Now we're going to use blue wool put yellow in the middle it automatically redies. so basically any color of wool can be converted into any other color you don't have any in betweens you don't have to dye it back to white or light gray or anything um, just take take the wool and put it whatever you want color you want in the middle so that's another nice advantage to it so if you're done with the project like to say I did the ceiling and I ended up with a bunch of blue extra blue wool extra but now I need red wool I I can just turn that blue wool into red wool so I don't have to have a million chests storing this rock wool stuff so let me show you how to make this it's, it's not very hard at all you'll need a couple extra machines we're gonna get into everything you need to know to, to use this stuff but basically you take slag and you put it in a, in a smelter and you'll end up with light gray rock wool so the machinery we have basically makes slag but let me show you I have this process I don't have it completely automated, honestly, I don't need to, but let me just grab a couple stacks of cobblestone. First thing we want to do is we want to convert this cobblestone into sand because we need sand to make slag. So I have this process automated. I just throw my cobblestone in here. This is my ore processor. This is where I convert you know, all my ores into ingots and stuff, but it also accepts cobblestone and I can reprogram this machine right now it's programmed to turn the cobblestone into sand I can also turn it into glass or smooth stone just by 
reprogramming the diamond pipes. But right now, what's going to happen is the cobblestone's going inside the macerator. It'll come out right here, go straight up this pipe, cross here, and into the output chest. So I don't need any sand right now, so we'll just leave that alone. But over here is the machine that makes the slag. This is, if you're watching this tutorial and you don't know about rock wall, this is going to be the part that you really need to know. Okay, but basically here's the input chest for my machine. You don't have to have this machine, um, but it's very helpful if you do. It's not th it wasn't that hard to make, but basically you're going to have to have two machines to make the slag. You're going to have to have a pulverizer, and then you're going to have to have oops, you're going to have to have an induction smelter. Now we're going to go over to all this here in a second. I'm going to show you how this machine works so that you'll be able to build your own. But basically, I have two chests. The yellow is the input, and the blue is the output. As you can see right there, this machine's been running a couple hours. I just built it a few hours ago. I already have a couple stacks of, or I'm sorry, a couple rows of slag. Well, each stack of slag is basically a stack of wool. So you can see right there, I already have more wool than I know what to do with. And so if, if I ever get to run and have too much slag, I can just flip this switch off. That turns off the engine and stop pump, it stops pumping the sand out of this chest. So as you can see, I could automate this further. I could have the output of the ore processor feed into here, but it's not necessary. No more than you're going to use it. Throw you about 10 stacks of cobblestone in there. Come back five minutes later, you got five stacks, or you got like 10 stacks of sand. Throw them in this chest. So that's kind of what I do. No reason to automate this anymore. This is plenty automated. So let's go over how to make this, how this all works. Here's the slag. These two machines are going to make the slag. So here's how you make slag. You throw metal and sand into an induction smelter and it will make two things. It will make it'll make the metal ingots and it also makes slag as a byproduct. And the slag is what we're using this machine for. Now here's the particular recipe I'm using. I'm using pulverized silver. So this machine, what happens is this pul this first machine pulverizes the silver. The pulverized silver gets sent to here. This machine converts it back into silver ingots. And there's actually some pipes back behind this machine. And it feeds it back into this machine. So the silver is sitting there cycling between, between the two machines over and over and over. And so all we have to do is feed sand into the smelter. And the sand will automatically get converted into the slag. So this setup right now is using is just being used to make slag. So let's go over this. Now, the silver goes right here. This is the input, and it gets pulverized, and that comes out right here. Now, the reason you're not seeing it here because it's automatically getting pulled out, but this is making pulverized silver. Next time I'm going to show you these configuration tabs because these are important for uh, automation of these machines. I don't know what mod these machines are part of, but I'm guessing rail crap, but I don't know. It doesn't really matter. But anyway, here's the configuration tab. There's three tabs actually. This one right here shows you the maximum power this machine will take. This shows you the stored energy, and this shows you how much power it's actually using. Uh, the red tab, this is to turn the machine off and on. A signal required. Here's just like an on off switch that disables the machine. I believe, or the control stats, I'm not sure, but here we can ha set the control signal, whether it's low or high, so a low redstone signal will make this machine work. Well, basically the thing automatically gets a, a low redstone signal by default, but anyway, I put switches out in front of all machines, but going back to this last tab, this is the configuration tab, as you can see right here, in the very middle, this represents the machines. Now, this machine has five outputs or inputs. It has five sides you can interact with. You can interact with the top here, the left, the bottom, the right, and this one in the corner that represents the back. And as you can see on this machine, I'm only using two sides. I'm using the right side and the back. Well, the right side, if you look up here, it's the output, and the back side is going to be the input. So the silver comes in the back and it leaves the right side. Now the silver comes into here. This machine has two inputs. As you can see right here, we have green on the left and purple on the right, and we can verify the purple. If you look right here, this side is set to purple. So anything that comes on the right side gets sent to this corresponding slot. Now to reprogram these, you just click these things, and you basically you can change the colors of all the sides, and 
you have to play around with it. So just get whatever colors you want. But I'm using four colors for this machine: green, purple, yellow, and orange. But um, green and purple are my inputs. And you can see right here on the side of the machines: the left side and the right side are the inputs. So the sand comes on the right side. The pulverized silver comes on the left side. They get smelted, and they make two by. They make uh, the silver ingots. The silver ingots, if you look right here, they leave out of the back of the machine and they get sent back. So the silver just loops around. What we're really wanting is we're wanting this slag. The slag is going to come out the bottom of the machine, as you can see right here. And I have a wooden pipe connected to the bottom of this, and there's a then stone pipe. It's wooden transport pipe and stone transport pipe, and they feed into this chest. And here's one thing to note about these machines they do not require engines to suck stuff out of the. Some of the machines do, like the industrial craft machines. I believe, I don't know, this is real craft or forestry or whatever, but not sure. But you don't have to use any engines. The only engine I have in this whole setup is right here, and this is to pull stuff out of a, uh, a gold chest. So, by the way, in case you didn't know, you have to have a wooden pipe, hook an engine up to it to pull stuff out of a chest or, or, or industrial craft machine. But not with these machines, once again. So if I was to actually rip this stuff out, let me rip a little bit of it out, just so you can see it. Okay. Now I don't know if I'm required to have a wooden pipe, but I went ahead and put it just in case. But you, as you can see, the silver ingots coming out of this machine on the right, coming around. The silver, silver is just cycling. So there you can see it. So that is very handy. Let me fix this. There we go. So that's how you make slag. This machine fills up with slag whenever I want some. Just grab a stack of it. Like if I need a stack of wool. I go upstairs for that because the machine upstairs is much, much quicker. Well, I'm actually out of on the ore processor. I'm out of slots to program it. So, But anyway, we take a, uh, some of the slag, throw it in here. As you can see right there, it's going to cook. It cooks pretty fast. I got 11 overclockers in there. And by the way, these electric furnaces, they run at maximum speed at 13 overclockers, but it takes a, a quite a bit of electricity to do that. But anyway, this is my tutorial on how to use rock wool. I hope you found it helpful. I really enjoy it because I just hadn't got around to it, but I'm going to pimp out my whole house with this stuff. Uh, really cool. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed this video or you found it informative please give it a like if the video gets a lot of likes first of all it just helps my channel but secondly the video gets a lot of likes I know to make more videos of that type if the video doesn't get a lot of likes I was like ah people don't like that video so I won't make that type of video anymore but anyways grumpy I appreciate you watching and don't forget to check out my let's play uh, we'll see you next time